King Charles celebrates his 75th birthday and author Gareth Russell is here to break it all down. And I don't think it's coincidental that it was launched on his 75th birthday. I think that shows you what he, what the importance he attaches to it. Plus, the royal family honors Queen Elizabeth during Remembrance Day. Kylie Kelsey pays tribute to the People's Princess, Eagle style. And the crown is set to return as the creator speaks out on the scenes surrounding Diana's death. We've got that plus so much more in today's Royally Us. Hey everyone, and welcome to Royally Us. I'm Christina, and I'm so excited this week because we have a very special co-host and guest host. We have Gareth Russell, our friend and royal author. Welcome, Gareth. Thank you so much for joining. Oh, you don't need to thank me, Christina. I'm so excited to do this. <laughs> Cannot wait. A um, few weeks away from your book, Hampton Court, coming out. Give us a quick teaser. I know you're going to be in studio in a couple weeks, so but give us a quick teaser before we jump in. <laughs> yeah, can't wait for that either. So my book, The Palace, is 500 years of history from the Tudors to the Windsors through different mm -hmm. people who have lived and loved and laughed occasionally at Hampton Court. So it's done really well here in the UK, and I'm excited to bring it over to the States. Cannot wait. Cannot wait to be, talk more in depth about it. But for right now, let's get into the comments from the viewers from last week. Let's start with Pam says, I think King Charles is doing a great job. I'm proud of all the royals doing what they are doing now. And I think the queen would be proud of them too. This, of course, does not include Harry. He's no longer a royal. He just needs to grow up and move on. Seems to be the same sentiment we get week after week, Gareth. <laughs> and that's interesting because that's, that's not totally dissimilar to what Brits broadly speaking, not universally, but broadly mm -hmm. speaking, our feeling as well. Uh, Prince, uh, Prince Charles, uh, there's no excuse in 2023 for me to make this. <laughs> Zero excuse. Uh, the king, uh, the, his approval ratings are pretty solid. Mm -hmm. And certainly I think there's not the sympathy for the Sussexes that there maybe was two, three years ago. So that's tracking both sides of the Atlantic. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, let's get into our news of the week. And like we said, King Charles is celebrating his 75th birthday, officially 75. He spent part of his 75th birthday launching the Coronation Food Project. So his idea, the palace says, was to seek to bridge the gap between food waste and food need. It will operate across the United Kingdom, helping people and helping the planet. Um, he and Queen Camilla spent part of the day visiting a surplus food distribution center outside of London, and they met staff, volunteers, heard about ways food waste can be used for social good. So it seems like he is well celebrated. He also had a tea at Highgrove uh, during this big celebration last night. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so he all, I mean, it was a busy day. He also had a reception to honor nurses and doctors and midwives as well from our National Health Service here in the UK. So the Coronation Food Project is really interesting because it's this line that Charles III is, is this tightrope actually really that he's walking between what is politics? Does politics start with a big P or a small P? And for some people, um, many people, him interfering vening in issues of food surplus and food waste is something that's very welcome. There are some people who criticize it and say that it's a swipe at the conservative government here that he's commenting on disparities in living standards. But but generally speaking, I think most people think tackling this is a positive thing. So one of the things that he is really focusing in on, it's not just sort of social welfare and that aspect of things, Christina, it's also there is an environmentalist component to this. He is very yeah. concerned, and it is a building concern here in the UK, of just the sheer amount of food that is thrown away and wasted. I don't know if you have the same issue mm -hmm. there in America, but there yeah. recently, and this sounds so silly, but this, but it really does add up, that supermarkets tend to buy only vegetables that look aesthetically clean. Like they don't want sort of wonky or um, oddly grown, strange shaped vegetables. And that then means that tons right. upon tons are just not bought or not sold. And so there's a lot that's that's really slipping through the cracks. And then we do have things like food banks and we have people not having access to fresh fruit and vegetables or those fresh fruit and vegetables come at an, a, an unacceptably high price. So broadly speaking, the Coronation Food Project is very popular with a lot of people here in the UK. But also it is wedding the work that the king did with the prince's trust which is an extraordinary charity i know king charles still has mm. his critics but that charity that trust did phenomenal work it, it's about to be rebranded the king's trust which shows that he's going to be carrying it forward so those kind of social projects and the environmental projects are reaching a kind of perfect marriage here in the coronation food project and i don't think it's coincidental that it was launched on his 75th birthday. I think that shows you what, he, what the importance he attaches to it. 
Right. No, this is definitely something near and dear to his heart. And, mm. you know, obviously with the birthday, everybody's wondering if Prince Harry is going to be making that phone call. I know the BBC said that he, mm. may be, he may be taking some time out of his day to make a phone call. One would hope. But do you think that's a possibility? It Probably. I have to say I've been surprised. The Sussex, there's been a lot of like sus, um, sources close to the Sussexes that have been <laughs> leaking like sieves the last couple of weeks. Um, okay. Yes, I mean, I think maybe that there is an element of, of, of trying... To, no, what I will say for the Sussex... Excuse me, Sussexes every time. Too many S's. Uh, with the Sussexes, I think there sometimes are people who claim their sources and we don't know how close they actually are to the couple. Right. But... It, it's interesting that this is um, coming after this. Did they, didn't they receive an invitation to a party itself? It, it does seem like there hasn't been a huge party for the King's 75th. As you said, there's been this tea at, his, at probably his favorite home, High Grove. But really, with the Coronation Food Project and this reception I mentioned for our midwives and nurses in the National Health Service, it doesn't seem like it, there would have been a really big event for Prince Harry to come over. Right. So maybe the phone call, it, this news of the phone call is the Duke letting people know that he, he is he is still in touch with his father. Certainly, just to look back to what you said at the start, Christina, I think there is um, a certain sense of uh, frustration to be a strong word, but some people are sort of, you know, we would prefer to see this family get back um, to a more harmonious relationship so maybe that's part of it and who knows i mean i'm i'm sort of a sentimental sucker i i i sort of hope most families if they can 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 spend the time together positively so fingers crossed fingers crossed look the phone call does happen i totally agree with you we want to see a nice uh resolution especially around the holiday season let's all get together (laughs) um well (laughs) It has been a busy week for the royals because um, prior to King Charles's birthday, Princess Kate and the royal family um, honored Queen Elizabeth II um, during Remembrance Day, especially uh, Princess mm-hmm. Kate, because she stood on the balcony in London alongside Queen Camilla as they both wore black coats, hats, and a poppy label uh, lapel pin. Kate re-wore a Catherine Walker dress, completed her look with a pair of pearl earrings that had clusters of diamonds around it, and her earrings appeared to be repurposed from the um, from Elizabeth's diamond and pearl leaf brooch. Um, this was per Hello Magazine, and um, so it seems like she was definitely honoring Queen Elizabeth in her fashion and uh, jewelry choice. So what did you think of rem- the Remembrance Day service? Obviously, the senior members of the royal family were there, as they usually are in um, tradition. They are. It's a very important day for many people in the United Kingdom and across the Commonwealth. Certainly, you know, my grandmother lost a brother in the Second World War. There's there's a lot of families that were sort of at a generational stage, maybe, mm-hmm. where that generation who actually remembered it or experienced losses themselves are sadly passing away. So it is passing to other generations, and the royal family reflects that. Where Queen Camilla and the Princess of Wales stood, that is where the senior female members of the royal family have stood since the first Remembrance Day service 103 years ago. So it is that's that's where we expect to see them. With regards the earrings, I had to do a little sort of truffling around of people who know more about jewellery than I do. And what happened with a lot of Edwardian and Art Deco pieces was that the way the brooches and tiaras actually, interestingly, were put together is they're detachable. So they kind of slot together like a jigsaw. So actually, there wouldn't have been any damage done to the brooch as it was repurposed for the earrings. And those pieces could go back into a brooch again. So it's sort of like a very very fancy game of tetris with these jewelry pieces apparently so yes it was it wasn't elizabeth the second piece that she was wearing um the queen had worn it to a state visit to south korea i believe uh, earlier in her reign and we also saw at the um the concert that, that happened the night before we saw the princess of wales wearing a three strand pearl necklace and that apparently is also elizabeth the second sam cohen who was elizabeth the second's assistant private secretary has said those were the pearls that she regularly wore on a day-to-day basis so yes there was a lot of nods to elizabeth ii at this first remembrance service well the first full remembrance the first full year remembrance service or excuse me with charles iii there obviously was one in 2022 but it, it this really felt like i mean even in my head it was the first one it's not there's a there's an element to which this really feels like the first full year step forward if that makes sense mm-hmm. and as i said at the start yes i do think there's a lot of families here that are 
confronting that that generation that Elizabeth II represented and remembered the war has passed away. So I find it I find it quite touching, and I and I like to see the older generations being remembered by the younger. All right, well, time to spill the royalty, and what everybody's going to be talking about over the next few weeks is the crown because it is set to return. And Jonathan Price, who plays Prince Philip, opened up to the Hollywood Reporter about what it was like watching back the scenes surrounding Diana's death. He told the outlet the cast and crew were watching and there were a lot of tears and long silence when they stopped screening. In some ways, seeing it, I thought because of our uh, because of our reaction that we'd done it right, that there was a great emotional involvement in it for everyone. Diana was such a precious memory for so many people all over the world. I cried for real when she died and I cried when I saw it on screen. It's really extraordinary. And according to creator Peter Morgan, those scenes wouldn't have happened at all if they hadn't landed um, um, Elizabeth DeBecky for the role. She said, to be honest, I was a little nervous because I wanted to be convinced that someone, somebody could play her. And it wasn't until I was absolutely sure that we got an Elizabeth DeBecky that I felt I thought if we didn't get her, I'd have to find a way to almost write around it. I'm sure this is the scenes that everybody's going to be talking about. They said that in previous interviews that they've tried to handle this as delicately as possible. But how do you feel about the crown taking on this part in history? I don't know, to be totally honest. I have mixed thoughts. So what I will say is I completely and totally agree with Peter Morgan about Elizabeth Debicki. I think it's one of the most extraordinary performances. I think Mm -hmm. it is human. It's a performance, not an impersonation. She is a phenomenal Uh, portrayal of Diana, Princess of Wales. But regardless of how Peter Morgan or Jonathan Price feel, and there's no reason to doubt that they're being very sincere in what they say, Mm -hmm. I think you would have to be fairly obtuse to imagine that there will be many, many people who don't care how tastefully you did it. They just don't think this should be done at all. And we've had Mm -hmm. discussions about this. You know, there there were discussions when Meryl Streep played the Iron Lady. Was it necessary to show Thatcher's battle with Mm -hmm. dementia? There have also been criticisms of the crown before. Were there things that were misrepresented? Or were there scenes mm-hmm. that didn't need to be included in it because you are dramatizing people who were alive or have only re- or have immediate family who are still alive? You know, I'm thinking the first time that this kind of really raised its head was way back in season two. I don't know if you remember, but there were some people who really questioned the taste of showing Prince Philip in a dream wandering through the air, this the aeroplane crash site where he saw all his dead relatives. Uh, and so I think that th- there will be this discussion. We've had it with things like Bombshell and The Loudest Voice. There are just ha- there will always be questions. The assassination of Gianni Versace, there, be, there will be questions about what is tasteful, what is the trade-off between entertainment and the morality behind depicting the bereavements of the, the still living. So there's no way they're going to dodge a controversy with this, Christina. It's just not going to happen. All right. Uh, rounding out our royalty section, uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are feeling more refreshed than ever after a bumpy year, a source exclusively told Us Weekly. They said that they got their bearings back and are focused and recharged and ready to get back out there again. And that after laying low, it kind of really paid off for them, according to a source that the negative response to Harry and Meghan's Spotify exit combined with bad press surrounding um, their near catastrophic car chase and, you know, um, it, it led to a rough few months for the Royals, but they are back to focusing on their business ventures and things like that. And it seems like, I mean, based on what we, we saw, um, you know, earlier this week from them, like meeting with, um, you know, celebrating Remembrance Day, it seems like maybe that they are taking a step in the right direction. Yeah, fingers crossed. I always think public opinion is such a fickle, fascinating thing. And I don't really ever think of anyone Mm -hmm. as out just because they're down, if that makes sense. And I think, yeah, the Sussexes have had PR-wise not a great run in the last few months. Mm -hmm. Uh, And and quite a bit of that has been of their own making. Um, Certainly they do have, as I mentioned, very strident critics. But but, but after a while, it does have to be the responsibility of of your own actions, I think. And so I would say Mm -hmm. that the Sussexes pivoting to something that's a slightly different approach is sensible and also regrouping look whatever you think of the spotify decision and whether that was justified or not for them i imagine it 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 has to be a difficult blow to take so yeah you know take your time relax uh, and, and pivot into something new and that's what i 
hope and think they're doing. True. And everyone loves a redemption story. So let's Absolutely. see what happens. All right. Well, let's round this out. Let's finish this off with our Royal History Moment of the Week with a fun story. So Kylie Kelsey, of course, has been in the news a lot over here. Um, she is married to, of course, football player Jason Kelsey, and she channeled her inner Princess Diana and for the official Instagram account of the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, they shared photos of Kylie rocking a vintage jacket inspired by the late Princess of Wales. The famous jacket was first worn by Diana in 1991 when she was taking Prince William to school. She reportedly got the jacket from Jack Edelstein, the Eagles' former statistician, and he was um, family friends with Princess, Princess Grace of Monaco, and he met Diana at Grace's funeral in 1982. In an October interview with ESPN, um, Maureen Schneider, who is the granddaughter of the former Eagles owner, Leonard Toes, explained, while having a conversation with Princess Diana, Edelstein discovered that she knew nothing about American football, but that she did love the colors green and silver. I love this story. It's just a fun story. <laughs> it is a fun story. I also I really empathize with it, because I, I mean, I spent Thanksgiving in Mississippi and Tennessee, and I know nothing about American football, so you can <laughs> imagine how indescribably stupid I look midway through thanksgiving people were very patient but it's not i mean american football is not generally this nation's um cup of tea and so i kind of admire princess diana for saying look i love the colors i have no idea about the game uh, and it's also it's, it's a really interesting little one of those little moments history likes to throw up every now and then of the fact that this jacket it has a connection between Princess Grace and Princess Diana, you know, two of the most photographed and celebrated um, princesses mm. of the 20th century. So, yeah, I love that story. And also, I think it reminds you of, of Diana's sense of fun and style and presence that she really had. Mm -hmm. and yeah, those photographs of her, I think she was taking Prince William to school at Pembridge Square at the time, uh, his yeah. school at Pembridge Square in London. And it, there's just, there is a, uh, there's an ease and a joyfulness to Diana sometimes in those photographs. And I think sometimes in the shadow of just the tragedy that came later, we, we can forget that. Yeah. 30 years later, 30 plus years later, we're still yeah. talking about this jacket and still talking about her style. I mean, the mark that she left is undeniable. It really is. Well, Gareth, this was so much fun. Thank you so much for guest hosting. I'm so excited because in a couple of weeks, you're going to be right on this couch right next to me, and we're going to be talking all about your book, Hampton Court. You can all pre-order it right now. So thank you so much for taking the time and being here with me today. No need, as I said, no need to thank me, Christina, and I can't wait to see you. All right, we'll see you guys soon. Everybody keep commenting, keep subscribing, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. For more news content and exclusive interviews, make sure to hit the sub, like, and bell button down below and visit usmagazine.com.